At this evening, we had a very good discussion about uh, the measles outbreak that's affecting the Orthodox Jewish community. We have five, 55 cases now, which is really, which is a lot, the most number of cases since 1992. And it's important that parents know, you know, that their children need shots for school, and that's one way we can stop this outbreak from getting even bigger. Um, kids should really have shots. They need it to attend daycare. They need it for pre-K, um, for Head Start programs, and then also for school. It's important for parents whose children are going away to camp because there have been outbreaks in the camps as well. So our, what the health department wants to do is to prevent and stop this outbreak of measles. It's why we've been urging all parents and urging pediatricians to vaccinate every child who's six months of age and older who hasn't had a measles vaccine, and that's given as MMR. So all the children need vaccine. If they've only gotten one and they're over a year, they need to get a second vaccine. And this way we'll be protecting children who would otherwise be vulnerable. Okay, so if someone knows that they've had two valid vaccines against measles, then they don't need another vaccine. If they're unsure, then they can check with their doctor who can do a blood test if they don't have a record, or they can, the easiest thing is to just get another vaccine. One thing that I don't think many people are aware of is in fact that there are outbreaks in Europe. For example, there's measles in the United Kingdom, there's measles in London now, and so people may be traveling for the summer and actually put themselves at risk. Our outbreak actually started by someone who came back from London with, with measles. Can you discuss what's going on right now with the measles outbreak in the from communities? Well, the health department is here to educate the community leaders about the current outbreak. This is the largest measles outbreak in the last 25 plus years. Uh, there's currently 55 known cases in the last few months, but that number is growing as the number of contacts are growing. Uh, this uh, uh, outbreak is different than others in that this one is occurring primarily in vaccine refuser families and now has spread into the under one year population who are not yet in for measles. So this is a very serious outbreak. Uh, unfortunately, there's been multiple complications already, including severe pneumonias, there's been two miscarriages, an adult has been hospitalized, and now it's spreading into the younger children who are at great risk for encephalitis and pneumonia. It's a very dangerous outbreak, and we're here to try to put an end to it by educating the community and making sure that these children are not admitted to school uh, if they don't have the proper immunization, and if they do come down with measles, that they don't return to school until their quarantine period is over. Again, can you discuss so with the viewers who are watching this what the symptoms are so people realize the severity of this? So measles starts out as a simple upper respiratory type infections, red, itchy eyes, uh, goes on to a cough and then a rash that begins on the face and spreads to the rest of the body. In younger children like babies who are not fully immune, immunized or immune competent, they can develop complications like encephalitis, pneumonia, secondary ear infections, women can have miscarriages. Uh, these are all potentially very serious side effects and measles, although it can be a mild disease in some in uh, people who are immunocompromised or in young children, it could be a very severe illness with hospitalization and in some cases death. Okay, without mentioning names of the schools, uh, are there any schools being uh, sued because the schools do not want to accept kids that have not been immu immunized? Mark actually uh, was, I represented them on the medical testimony side back in January. They were taken to Baston over not accepting a vaccine refuser family. They were successful in keeping that child out of the school. And there are many other schools that are currently under tremendous pressure under a false religious objection to vaccination saying that from Jews cannot be immunized. That is incorrect, inappropriate, and the school principal's the point of this meeting was to tell them that the principal is not obligated to accept any religious exemption from an Orthodox Jew or anybody else for that matter. There is no such thing as an appropriate religious exemption to immunizations in the firm community. Okay. <clears throat> what would you uh, uh, hope uh, like people watching this? What do you want parents to do? They're watching this now. They heard what you just said. What 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 should be the? They need to make sure that not only are their children immunized. 
set the appropriate schedule, but they also need to educate those around them. If they know people who refuse vaccines, uh, don't tell them it's okay. Don't accept them as uh, being okay to have around your children. If they refuse vaccines, they're at high risk for coming down with one of these infections, and they are at risk of passing it on to your children because no vaccine is 100% effective. So if your child is exposed to one of these individuals, although they'll probably not get sick, there is a small chance that they will as well. So we need to put up a unified front to these vaccine refusal families that they should not be allowed to enter the schools, and certainly they shouldn't feel comfortable within our communities just spreading these diseases inappropriately. Now you mentioned schools. I mean, is it dangerous if they even walk into an elevator or a casino hall? Could that yes. spread the disease also? Measles is highly contagious in a respiratory fashion by respiratory droplets. The health commissioner spoke about a case recently of a child here in Borough Park who contracted measles. There was another child who was in that elevator about a half hour prior. This other child entered the same elevator a half hour later, and there were still measles droplets, respiratory droplets, in the elevator, and that child contracted measles in the, during the incubation period. So yes, uh, it can be contracted by easy respiratory contact. Just like we're talking now, if I were a measles infected individual, I would be passing the respiratory droplets. And someone that had the shot, do they have to be? Uh, do they have to get a shot again? How long does the shot last? Well, they, all vaccines you can lose immunity with time. So children receive two measles vaccinations, at one at age one, the other at age four. Adults need to be rechecked for measles titers as they age. Pregnant women go for that test when they have babies. Uh, most adults need to be reboosted for measles if they. Don't have appropriate titers. Uh, children now, there's a new recommendation during this emergency outbreak for children to get their first measles vaccine as young as six months of age, again at 12 months of age, and then again at four years of age. But currently, two measles vaccinations in the lifetime of a child, except during this current outbreak, during which it will be three measles vaccines during the outbreak. Okay, thank you.